In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Particle Nodes modifier in Cinema 4D. Hi, my name's Andy Needham. I'm a freelance senior motion designer based in London, and I've been working in the industry for over 20 years, and I've been teaching on platforms like LinkedIn Learning for over 11 years. And I thought I'll do something on YouTube now just to uh, get some quick tutorials out there uh, topics that I'm interested in and you know you may not have even had a need or uh, a need to use any of the scene nodes yet because there's no use case for you but if you're interested in particles the particle nodes modifier is a really good way into scene nodes because it's all the same kind of stuff we're manipulating the values of those particles and it can be really fun to work with you can build some really advanced setups so we're going to start with the basics. We're going to start by making a modifier that will allow us to change the radius of the particles based on a set duration. Thanks for being here and thanks for watching and uh, let me know what you think. All right, on with the tutorial. Let's go. So let's dive into Cinema 4D and take a look at this setup. So I'm going to go to my particles layout. And if you don't have a particles layout, I highly recommend that you uh, set one up. If you don't know how to do that or you'd like my layout then let me know in the comments and I'll make it available to you. Let's grab an emitter. So I'm going to create a basic emitter and if we just press play you can see that we just have some particles firing out and in our particle group let's turn on draw radius and what we're going to do is zoom in a little bit so we can see that we are indeed getting a little circle around here. This radius value is set to 1 we don't have any variance at the moment, so we're going to make these particles scale up over a certain duration, which will be in seconds, based on our frames per second in our project. And so they're going to go from zero to our target radius value over that time period. So that's what we're going to do with the particle nodes modifier. And I've got mine in my layout here. You can just come over to simulate modifiers and find the particle node modifier. Let's add that to our scene and we'll double click and this gives us the node editor. I'm going to dock mine uh, at the bottom here, could be anywhere, I'm just going to stick it maybe under the timeline for now. Uh, maybe above the timeline, Who? let's put it here and I'm just going to get rid of this space. Oh, it's gone a bit clunky. So actually that looks all right to me. All right, so I'm going to just press this button here in the top right to get rid of the attributes manager that's built into the node editor because I'm going to use the attributes manager here. And I'm going to click on the hamburger here and just choose uh, show window title just so I've got a little bit extra space here. And also when you control or command click this, you can see that it just um, responds to that and you get your full perspective view back again. So this is the reason for docking it here and that looks pretty good to me. All right, so what do we need? We need to, um, we're dealing with the age and we're dealing as, a, as an input. We're also gonna have our radius as well and our radius as an output. So to begin with, I want to take the age and we can have a minimum age and a maximum age, and then I'm going to remap the age to a radius value. So to do that, the simplest thing is a range mapper node. Let's double click here and I'm going to type in range. And at the bottom here, we've got range mapper. Let's add that to our graph. So our input, what are we going to be looking at? The age. What age are we interested in? So at the moment, from frame for, from zero seconds to uh, one second. That could be our range, okay? So what do we want to do with that? Scale up from zero to one. Now let's just see if we take this result and put it into our radius, does that even work? Let's rewind and play. And you can see actually it is working. We've got a radius of zero. And if we get to frame 30 or beyond it, you can see that we have a radius of uh, one. And in fact, the issue that we'll run into now is, and it might be, it looks, can you see if we zoom out? Let's just see. 
Let's give ourselves some more time as well. Let's go for uh, 300 frames. And you'll see as we progress, they just keep scaling up. There's no stop on this. There's no nothing to say, well, once I've got to that point, I should just be the target radius. So we need to compare the age uh, with the duration that we're setting. So if the age has reached the or is less than um, the, dur the max uh, duration here, then let's uh, stop doing what we're doing and just switch over to the current radius. So we're going to use a compare node. I'm going to grab one of those compare. So if our age is, I'm going to say less than or equal to our duration, which at the moment is one, and you can see that that is our max here, uh, input max is one, then um, that would be true. So do something at that point, which would be our range mapper. So we need a an if node, because we get the condition here. When this is true, do the true condition, which is going to be this. And when it is false, just go back to whatever, what the radius is. So we will get to our target radius and stick to it, and then simply output that as the radius. So hopefully you're following along and this makes sense. Um, let's rewind and press play. And you can see that we're still scaling up and and yeah, this is working. So you can see that our radius stays at that value. They're not getting any bigger, but if we go to the beginning here, they're starting at zero. So this is working nicely for us. Now, it's a bit confusing to dive into all of these, especially when this input to is here relates to this input max. Um, so let's give ourselves some some values that we can just plug in here, make it easier for us to use and easier for us to read as well. So I'm going to use a value node. And this is automatically connected to that. I didn't want it to do that, actually. I'm just going to leave it floating here for now. Now, this value is going to be our duration. So where it says float, you can type in duration just by double clicking. That's the same as going into the basic tab and just changing the name here. So this is our duration. The input is a float. You can see the, the color coding is the same as what we're dealing with. So we want to connect this up to here. Okay, and our duration should be one. And our range mapper input max is the same value. So this is using both. Now we've simplified those inputs, which is great. And we can tell that we're dealing with the duration here. Does it still work? Rewind, play. Yeah, it's still working. And the same for our output max. So this is going to be our target scale. Let's make a copy of this. So control, click and drag, or command, click and drag. And we'll plug that into our output max and just change the value to three. And with this, I'm going to go into the basic tab and just call this target scale. And if we type correctly, we get the right name. There we go. Um, let's just, in fact, change this up. So we can now change this to, say, 10. And we'll rewind and play. And they're going to scale up to 10. And they'll stop scaling when they get to 10. And you can see that that visually is working pretty well. OK, so again here, duration 3 is in seconds. We need to get past 90 frames to reach the full scale. And you'll see that that happens now and they'll stop growing after 90 frames. Uh, so we've got ourselves a usable scale up modifier. Now, this could be even more useful if we were to be able to have a way of adding variation. That would be awesome if we could do that. Now, the particle node modifier has field support. So what we could do is add a random field and grab the values of this and apply them to the inputs that we've got going on here. So when we're working with the random field, because um, I just want a, a random number to work with, I'm going to switch it over to random, the mode to random. 
Uh, we don't want a changing value or anything like that. That's what noise would do. So this is going to give us a random number. And what we can do is then multiply this by our target scale to give ourselves some variation. So let's just see if this is going to work. We're going to be working with this um, float value here. So what we'll do is we'll grab a scale. So our input going into this is going to be the target scale. And then we're going to say, well, are we scaling by the value? Yeah. Then put that as our new output. OK, so this should give us some variation if we rewind and press play. And yeah, we're getting a variation in our radius, which is great. OK, so this is all um, fairly straightforward stuff, right? I think um, should be quite easy to understand. We've gone quite slowly over this. So what we could do next is just say, what if we want control over that variation, like in terms of an on off switch, you could come into here, well, into the um, into here and just essentially turn this off. And this would stop any any variation. OK, we get back to where we were before. But what if uh, the, the power of these particle node modifiers is that you can build interfaces and things like that and make it so that you don't even have to go into here or into anything else. You just treat it like an object of an object that you're really familiar with in Cinema 4D. Um, and so to do that, we could use a another condition, another if actually, because we want the condition. So we could grab ourselves another if node. And I'll grab that. And um, I want to say, well, if when this is true, I want this value. OK, I want the field value. If it's false, I want just one because I want it to be itself. And then I'll connect this up to here. And so we'll scale by that now. And this is this little checkbox here that's going to do essentially this. OK, so let's try that out. We'll, we'll, we're in here and currently this is false. So what we are expecting is this result. So as if as if the um, random random field was disabled in the field list. So I'll press play. And that's looking like the expected result. Let's enable it and we'll rewind and play and we should be getting variation. So this is looking right. OK, so this is good. Now um, I want to sort of bring this out into the interface now. And I also want to bring out the duration and the target scale as well. So how do we do that? We can drag our input over to this right side here or over to here. And you can see add new input. So when we do that, you can see if we give ourselves a bit of space here you can see that we've now got this duration value. And if we click onto the um, the particle nodes modifier, it, we have this input list here, which is our duration. So we do this, add new input. We've got our target scale. We do this, add new input. And we've got this thing that says condition. Now, that doesn't mean much to me at the moment. Um, what we could do is change this to, say, uh, add variation. OK, and that's just yes or no. So this now is a more usable um, object where we have inputs that we can control without diving into the nodes. And that's uh, the power of this, I think. You can build up your own, your own modifiers just using this method. So I think we're getting a pretty decent result here. We can then change our duration to be like one if we want this to be really quick. And you see they're really reacting like that. We can make this just, uh, you know, one with a variation so they can be just tiny little sparkles almost. You've got now got a really cool um, scale up modifier from zero to the duration that you specify. Now we can get really far into this um, in later tutorials where we kind of build up something that 
scales up and then after a certain time it could scale down, things like that. If that's of interest to you, then let me know. So hopefully you can see the power of the particle nodes modifier and you can start to work on your own setups. I wanted just to take this uh, a little bit further just by adapting this setup. And in this scene over here, um, I've got a speed up. And with this one, it's really just the same kind of uh, interface. Um, we're just saying, you know, target velocity. And the only additional node here is that we're composing a vector. So what we're doing is we're taking our result and putting it into the Z um, value here of the velocity so that it will travel along the Z axis. So when we rewind and play, you see that we get this variation in speed. So it's starting from nothing and going to uh, our target, which is 150, but with a bit of variation. So if we turn off the variation, you can see that just rewind and play. It's just kind of eases into that value over a second. But with the variation, you can get some really nice looking results. You can boost this. You get something kind of crazy going on. And the great thing about all of these um, is that you can just mix in, you know, the usual forces and things like that. And we could trace this. So if we just rewind and play, see now we're getting that tracing happening and the turbulence is kicking in. So you know, these things all play nicely um, with the other nodes, uh, well, the other modifiers and forces that you can set up in here. So uh, if you want to support me and support the channel, I'll make these files available on Gumroad or something similar. Anyway, the link to those will be in the description. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Let me know what you thought in the comments and like, subscribe, you know, the usual stuff. And uh, yeah, that was fun. I'll hopefully see you in another tutorial. Cheers. Bye.